Hello Year 10s, this is Lesson 6 from the 1.3 booklet Making Use of Energy Year 10s. <clears throat> so we don't actually have the interactive whiteboard slides but we don't need them. Explain how heat is transferred to us from the sun. Explain what processes of heat transfer do not occur and why? Well, the first thing is we've got the sun and about 150 million kilometers away, we got the earth. In between us is space. Space is a vacuum and it has no particles no particles at all that is the definition of a vacuum so of course there can't be any convection you need particles and there can't be any conduction you need particles neither of those processes of heat transfer occur so that's part of the answer to the first question <clears throat> well how does infrared heat radiation get from the sun to us well it occurs as infrared heat waves they travel at the speed of light many of them miss planet earth but a fraction of the infrared heat waves strike planet Earth. And that is why there is life on planet Earth. So explain how heat is transferred to us from the sun. I've just explained it. So write up all of that information in this paragraph block here. Right, can I save money by using free energy from the sun? You certainly can. You can use solar panels. There are two types of panel. The first one is a solar photovoltaic cell. It's called a solar cell, a solar PV cell, PV cell, photovoltaic. And what it does is it converts sunlight directly into electricity in fact what happens is infrared waves hit the solar cell so here we go I'm going to send an infrared heat wave from the sun and it's directly going to hit this solar cell, this PV cell on this watch. And infrared waves hit the solar cell and they cause electrons to move. And from the first booklet that we looked at, this flow of electrons is electric current. So you're converting infrared heat energy into the movement of electrons, which is electricity. Easy, job done. Right, so we've looked at a solar cell. Now let's let, have a look at a solar water panel, okay? Um, you've got a cold water tank. I'm filling in the cold water now. There it is, all of this water in here. And by two different systems in the UK, this water is heated up and then it passes through a pipe and then you have a nice warm shower. Now, how do we heat up the water in the water tank? Well, step one is to use your boiler and that just sends hot water in enclosed pipes into your hot water tank to heat up the water okay 
uh, the two waters don't mix. The green pipes don't actually mix with the water in the water tank. But what happens is heat is transferred. It moves from the green pipes into the cold water to heat it up by infrared heat waves and a little bit of conduction and a little bit of convection. That's the first way that you can heat up water. But of course, that costs you money. You've got to use electricity or gas to get the boiler up to temperature. Now you could include a second way of heating up your water. You could use this solar panel here. Infrared heat waves from the sun strike the panel. There's water inside the panel. The water heats up. It then flows, and I'm going to use the yellow here. It flows through the pipes, gives off a lot of its heat energy to the cold water that you're going to use to have a shower. So it heats up that water. And then this cooler water comes back and then it's heated up again in your solar water panel. So in the UK, solar water panels, the one in yellow, are normally installed into a hot water system together with an efficient boiler system. Remember, that's that one here. The solar panels are used to preheat the water entering the boiler. This reduces the amount of electricity or oil or gas needed to heat up the water to its operating temperature. So in other words, solar water panels save you money by reducing your gas or electricity bills. Now, obviously, during the night time or on cloudy days, it's the boiler in green that will be doing all the work. In other countries with very sunny climates, the water panels, that's the yellow system, can be the main ways of heating water. They might not have gas and electricity. Name one similarity and one difference between a solar cell and a solar panel. You need to write this down. The similarity is they're both going to be um, colored with a very dark color or black. And that is because, well, we'll come on to that a bit later on, that they get the panels are going to be black or very dark. Now, the difference is very, very stark. A solar cell takes infrared heat energy and converts it into electricity. Whereas a solar panel just heats up water. And that helps to save money on your electricity or gas bills. And this questionnaire, what color should a designer use when creating a new solar panel? Justify your answer with some science. Well, it's going to be a black or very dark material because black is good at ab. absorbing 
infrared heat radiation. Right, here's an experiment to prove that a black can absorbs a more heat waves at a faster rate than say a silver can. We've got here an infrared heater. It gives out infrared heat waves in all directions. We've got two cans, one black, one silver. There's a thermometer sticking out the top to give us our temperature. And inside the can, we have got the same amount of water. And what you're gonna do is at time zero, you are going to turn on the infrared heater and you're going to measure the water temperature of the silver and black can every five minutes for 20 minutes. It's nice and simple. Independent variable, the thing that you change, that's the color of the can. Dependent variable, you're going to measure the water temperature don't forget the units in degrees C. And then control variables. What you're going to keep the same to make it a fair test? Well, surely you're going to have the same volume of water in centimeters cubed. Surely it's going to be the same distance from the radiant heater in centimeters. Surely the can is going to be the same size. Surely the can is going to be made out of the same material. Surely you're going to have the same type of liquid in the can. And surely you're going to start with the same starting temperature in degree C. So you can complete that as well. Okay, so we're constructing a results table for the results of this experiment. We've got time in minutes from naught to 20 minutes. We've got the water temperature in degree C of the black can and of the silver can. Let's put in the data. At the start, the temperature was the same. It was 20 degrees. No need to put in the degrees. It's already in the results table. Um, these are the results for the silver can. After five minutes, 21, 10 minutes, 23, 15 minutes, 27, and the final temperature was 31. In the black can, you can see at any stage, the temperature is larger, is higher. Now, what I'm going to do is plot those points. Can I make a suggestion? You do one set of results at a time. That's exactly what I will do. I'll do the black one first. It would be very naughty not to put in the axes time in minutes. Temperature, degree C, and then I'm going to use a false color. So black, let's do all the, the uh, black data first. At five minutes, it was 22. At 10 minutes, it was 27. At 15 minutes, it was 34. 20 minutes, 45. Black can. And put in, if you can, your line of best fit. Like so. And let's use a different color for the silver can. Okay, silver can it is then. So same starting temperature. And then it's five minutes was 21. 
10 minutes 23 15 minutes 27 and 20 minutes 31 massive difference in the temperature of the water inside the cans okay well the conclusion infrared heat radiation is absorbed best by the black can in fact black followed by dark colors followed by light colors followed by white followed by silver is the worst at absorbing heat radiation now why is this first off I'm going to color in this can in black and hopefully you'll understand why we got the results that we did the infrared heat waves I'm doing a nice pink color so the heat source emits the same number of heat waves in both directions but it's what happens to those heat waves that is important to understand now most of the infrared heat waves the arrowheads show the direction that they're traveling in just about all of the infrared heat waves are going to be absorbed by the black can some of them some of the heat waves will be absorbed by the silver can but what do you think happens to some of the heat waves think about a mirror yep they're going to be reflected they're going to be reflected so less heat can get through to the water inside the silver can that's your answer some heat waves infrared heat waves are reflected by the silver can end of lesson